Hey friends, in this video I'm going to be making some low carb breakfast sandwiches. My husband eats these every day just about for breakfast and it makes my life so much easier to get a whole bunch made, put in the freezer, and then I can just pull a couple out in the morning. If you guys have watched me for a while, you know I used to do tons of freezer breakfast sandwiches um, with regular bread and my family would eat that all the time. But when my husband wanted to transition to a little bit lower carb, I have started making them with the egg white bread and he has been feeling really great um, starting his day off with really low carbs and so the breakfast sandwiches are convenient he can eat them in his truck which usually he's rushing out and has to eat in his truck and it's helping him keep his energy high throughout the rest of the day of course the first thing I'm gonna do is make my egg white bread let me show you the ingredients I am going to get two loaves going at the same time so I have 12 egg whites in each bowl what did your sister make that for you? Yeah. I love it. To the egg whites, I'm gonna add some salt. This is Redmond Real Salt, some allulose, and some cream of tartar. I'm gonna get that all whipped up and then I will add my egg powders. So I am going to do half egg white powder and half whole egg powder. The um, recipe for one loaf calls for 80 grams of the egg white powder, and since I'm doing half and half, I'll do 40 grams of the egg white, 40 grams of the whole egg. And the reason that I'm doing half and half is because the more egg white powder you use in the bread, and if you use only egg white powder, like the original recipe calls for, the bread is drier, and because it's drier, it holds up a little bit better. So if you're having like some really saucy meat inside, or if you're freezing it, I think it's gonna hold up better with some egg white powder and not all whole egg powder. I love the taste of the bread with only whole egg powder in there, 80 grams of that. And if I'm just gonna be eating it like fresh, fresh baked plain bread, I prefer the whole egg powder bread. But if I'm gonna be doing the freezing or if I'm gonna be using it with something that has a lot of sauce or might be kind of wet, I like to do either all egg white powder or half and half. To each bowl, I'm gonna add a half a teaspoon of cream of tartar a half a teaspoon of salt and a fourth of a cup of allulose. I'm gonna get the first one whipped up, then I'm going to add the egg white powder, then I will take the bowl off and get the second one whipped up and in the first one, I'll then add the whole egg powder and mix that in separately. The reason I do that is because if I mix it with the whole egg powder, um, with the mixer, I'm gonna have to wash the mixer really well before I do the second batch, and I wanna just keep it as fast as possible. So pulling it off before I put the whole egg powder is gonna be a time saver. All right, now to add in my 40 grams of egg white powder. All right, I'm just gonna switch this one out. Preheating the oven to 325. Since I'm not reusing the mixer, again, I'll go ahead and use the mixer to mix in the whole egg powder. So I have always sprayed my pans with avocado oil just because uh, Maria Emmerich always does that but she doesn't use parchment paper, so I'm gonna try doing no spray, avocado oil spray. I had a couple people mention that they don't and it works out just fine. So when you make breakfast sandwiches, you could totally make like little buns and do, because I used to use sandwich thins when I made them with regular bread, 
you could totally do that. I am just choosing what's the easiest for me. And it's so easy just to make a loaf of bread and slice it. And the slices hold up really well. Just in the end, it works out the best for me. But you could totally do it any other way. And I also did a um, video where I did Hot Pockets and things. And I tried to make some um, breakfast sandwiches, kind of like Hot Pockets. And that worked out okay. Um, in there I talk about what I would do differently next time, which I haven't done yet because I've just been making bread and having that be good enough for breakfast sandwiches, but um, like frying the sausage ahead of time and stuff like that to um, make it work out so you can make your own little breakfast hot pockets as well. I'll link that video up in the cards if you wanna go check that out. My oven is preheated, so I'm throwing these in for 45 minutes and then they will sit in here after the oven has turned off um, for 30 minutes before I take them out. Cook time is almost done and they're looking pretty beautiful, but I'm gonna turn off the oven and uh, let them sit in there and cool off slowly for 30 minutes. It is the next day now, and it is not required to let the bread sit overnight before you slice it. You do want it to be completely cool to the touch, but um, I just couldn't get to it yesterday, and if you do let it sit overnight, it is a little bit easier to get really thin slices. When I store my egg bread, I typically store it in the fridge, but if it's just freshly baked and I'm just leaving it out one night, um, I don't mind leaving it on the counter. I typically get 14 to 15 slices per loaf, so that will give me 14 to 15 sandwiches since I have two loaves, but I don't really measure the slices. I just kind of slice as thin as what looks right. While I'm slicing, I'll give you some tips about the sausage that you pick if you're doing breakfast sandwiches with sausage. You can do different breakfast meats like uh, ham or bacon. Uh, I like to do the sausage because it's super easy. The sausage I get is from Costco and you can see it says reduced fat on there. And I have found that that's the best for these breakfast sandwiches because I don't have to cook it ahead of time. At one point they didn't have these at Costco and I had to get a different brand that was not reduced fat and I had to fry them up on the stove before I put them in the sandwiches because they had so much fat that you just had to render out some of it before you put it in the sandwich and that was just an extra hassle. But with these they defrost inside the sandwiches like if you have it if you have the bag of sandwiches in the fridge the sausages will defrost and then I just throw the whole sandwich into the microwave to heat it up on the morning that it's gonna get eaten. All right, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sandwiches out of that loaf. One other thing I love about using the whole egg powder in the um, bread instead of using all egg white powder is that my loaf is kind of more normal shaped. You can see the um, the sides don't shrink in as much and the bottom doesn't shrink in as much. It looks more like a regular loaf of bread. Looks like I'll get eight sandwiches out of this loaf. The breakfast sandwiches that I typically make have sausage and cheese and egg. One thing though is that I don't freeze the egg. So if I'm gonna be freezing the sandwiches, I don't put the egg on until the day it's gonna get eaten. And typically whenever I make fried eggs for breakfast, I just make an entire dozen and then we have extra to add to any sandwiches that are in the freezer or in the fridge. So half of these sandwiches are gonna go into the freezer, half of them I'm just gonna keep in the fridge um, for this upcoming week. So I'm only gonna put eggs into half of them. This part is super self-explanatory. I just put the sandwiches together until they are all done. I'm using pepper jack cheese for this batch, but of course any cheese would work. Since these ones with eggs are gonna go into um, the fridge, I'm just putting them in a Tupperware or a Glad container. 
For the ones I'm putting in the freezer, I'm just gonna throw them into a freezer Ziploc bag and they'll be ready to put in the freezer. So the way that I typically defrost these is that I will pull the bag out of the freezer. Like when I'm starting to get low on the ones that I have in the fridge, I will pull out a bag from the freezer and just stick it into the fridge and it'll defrost slowly. I found that that's the best way to do it. And then it's super easy in the morning just to pull one or two out and throw them in the microwave to heat them up. If they're frozen solid, you can um, heat them in the microwave. You just wanna do it like on 50% power until it's defrosted and then maybe like 30 seconds on high power um, to get it, the cheese nice and melty, but you kinda have to defrost it slowly. And that is ready to go in the freezer. The egg bread actually freezes really nicely. And especially if you let it defrost slowly in the fridge, um, it keeps a really good texture. So as far as reheating, as long as it's completely defrosted, I find about 30 seconds to a minute in the microwave is plenty to get the cheese melted and get it to a nice temperature. You can grill these, but um, like I said in my tips and tricks video on the egg bread. It browns really, really fast and it can brown faster than the insides get heated up. So what I recommend is heating it in the microwave first, making sure all the fillings are heated to your liking. And then you can either, you know, fry it on the stove with some butter, which would be delicious, or put it in a toaster oven. But since it does brown so much faster than regular bread, make sure you're watching it and maybe put it at a little bit lower heat than you would regular bread. I'm gonna get this sausage defrosted and then I'll go ahead and grill this up for you so you can see what it looks like when it's all ready to eat. Just buttering this side so that when I flip it, it'll get nice and brown. I just have the heat on medium. There it is. Doesn't that look like just a sandwich? So that's the technique I use for my very low carb, very high protein freezer breakfast sandwiches. I hope this video is helpful and I will see you again real soon in another video. They're not for you, Izzy. They're not for you, Izzy. Sorry. <laughs>